I've got one more problem for you to try. Okay. And it deals with height. So we're going to look and suppose that height is dictated by polygenetic inheritance. Once again, four alleles that code for the trait. When we talk about height, you really have to ignore the fact that there are environmental factors that affect height as well as genetics, things like malnutrition and illnesses. Okay. So just looking at polygenetic inheritance, the dominant alleles for height, we have SVTW, which was so very tall, wow, when I came up with this example. Okay. Each of these alleles are going to code for 1.5 feet each. Okay. So if you add all those alleles up, you get a six foot tall person. Okay. When you look at the alleles that are recessive, those only count for one foot each. So when you add all those up, you get a four foot tall person. Suppose that we took a man with that genotype and a female with that particular genotype, and we wanted to figure out a child that would possess eight dominant alleles. Okay. So we know the parent genotype, okay. and the genotype that we want is all capital letters. All capital letters. So we want to know the probability that this will happen. The easiest way to do this problem is to look at probabilities. So what is the probability that you will get capital S, capital S from the first set of alleles? The thing to do, once again, is turn to Punnett squares. Okay. So we have the man and we have the woman. When you run the Punnett square together, okay, capital S, okay, there is a one-half chance that we will get all dominant traits from just that one combination. Okay. We then look at the next allele, capital V. We're going to look at those together. Once again, a one-half chance that we will have dominant alleles. Continue this on. Same idea with the T and the W alleles. Okay. When we continue this on, we see one-half probability for S, one-half for V, one-fourth with T, and one-fourth with W. Multiply all these together gives us one sixty-fourth of a chance that our offspring will have eight dominant alleles. Okay. So knowing these probabilities offhand can be really daunting, but if you run a Punnett square, it takes just a couple of seconds and you'll always know that you're right. So the easiest thing to do when you run these polygenetic problems is to start off with what you know, find the pattern, and follow your simple steps, whether it's drawing a Punnett square to find probabilities or running a binomial expansion to find the F2 generation. I hope that you've enjoyed working through some of these with me. Once you find the pattern and familiarize yourself with it, all of this will become a breeze. Best of luck. Thanks.